Hi, my name is Erin Marshall and I'm here with Caitlin Medell and we're going to be talking to you today about the canine digestive system and how it works. So here we go. So a canine has a monogastric digestive system, uh, meaning that it is a simple single chambered stomach compared to a ruminant like a cow, a goat, or a sheep, which has a multi-chambered stomach. Monogastrics cannot digest the fiber molecule cellulose as efficiently as ruminants, though the ability to digest cellulose varies among species. A monogastric digestive system works as soon as the food enters the mouth, saliva moistens the food, and begins the digestive process. And as you can see being drawn out right now is the pig's digestive system. This digestive system is extremely similar to a dog's. And as you can see being labeled right now is the stomach, small intestine, as well as the large intestine. And next you'll see another monogastric organism being drawn out. Uh, the chicken has a very similar digestive system, but it does have a couple parts that are different. So the first difference is that a chicken has a crop. The crop provides the capacity to hold food for some time before further digestion commences. And the next difference that you'll see is the gizzard, which is often referred to as the mechanical stomach. The gizzard is made up of two sets of very strong muscles that act as the bird's teeth, and it has very thick layers that protect the muscles. And just a little fun fact as we move on, the dog actually has the shortest digestive system of most animals, taking roughly 8-9 to nine hours for the entire digestion process. Alright, now we're going to begin our journey on the canine digestive system, beginning at the mouth. Um, although the mouth is not considered part of the digestive system, this is where the food first enters the body. The sight and smell of food stimulates the flow of saliva in the mouth. Even just opening their dog food bag could stimulate these senses. Once food enters the mouth, more saliva is produced. Saliva contains mucus, which coats food to assist with swallowing. Now, as humans, our saliva contains enzymes that assist in the breakdown of food. Dog saliva lacks those enzymes, so all the digestion is done in the stomach. Although dogs aren't strictly carnivores, their teeth are designed for meat eating and can cut, chew, and crush food effectively. Dog saliva is able to kill germs, so if they ever eat something old and gross, they won't get sick. Now as you can see, the food is entering the mouth and saliva is produced. The food will be broken down into smaller pieces and it will make its way down the pharynx and down the esophagus. The esophagus is a pathway to a dog's stomach. A tight sphincter muscle at the entrance to the stomach ensures that once the food passes through, it cannot return easily and prevents stomach acid from moving back up the esophagus. Now as food moves down their esophagus, the muscles contract in a wave motion called peristalsis. It is pretty common for your dog to eat very quickly and not fully break down their food. Once the food is in the esophagus, it is possible for regurgitation to occur, then your dog will break up the food more and swallow again.
Once food passes through the esophagus and into the stomach, the main part of digestion begins. The stomach has secretions that contain protein digesting enzymes, hydrochloric acid, and mucus. As chemical digestion begins, the major enzyme pepsin is secreted in its non-active form, pepsinogen, to stop it from digesting the cells that produce it. Pepsinogen is activated in the stomach in the presence of hydrochloric acid. Mucus lubricates the food and protects the lining of the stomach. As you can see below, hydrochloric acid is secreted and hydrochloric acid allows breakdown of large pieces of protein and bones that dogs often ingest. Now as we move on to mechanical digestion, the wall of the stomach is muscular, particularly where it connects to the intestine, called the pyloric region. As you can see, the pyloric region is circled in pink. The stomach contents are mixed thoroughly and pushed towards the intestine. At this point, the contents of the stomach are a thick milky liquid called chyme. Now, although the stomach is a very important organ in the digestive system, this doesn't mean that the other organs aren't important as well. As you can see, the liver is a larger organ. The liver produces bile to aid in the digestion of fats. It processes nutrients absorbed from the small intestine and detoxifies potentially harmful chemicals. Next, we'll move on to a little bit of a smaller organ. This is the gallbladder. The gallbladder is useful and it stores and concentrates bile, which is then released into the duodenum to help digest fats. Another very important organ in the digestive system is the pancreas. The pancreas produces enzymes to break down food. It also makes insulin, which regulates carbohydrates and fat metabolism. The pancreas also produces glucogen, and two major functions are releasing digestive enzymes into the gut and releasing hormones into the blood. And now we're going to move on to the small intestines. The first part of the small intestines is called the duodenum. As you can see, the chyme is entering the duodenum. So the small intestines is the main site for digestion, specifically in the duodenum. In the duodenum, more enzymes from the intestinal wall and pancreas are added to the chyme. Pancreatic and intestinal juices contain enzymes such as protease for protein digestion, amylase for carbohydrate digestion, and lipase for fat digestion. You can see these juices being secreted onto the chyme. Next, you will see the middle part of the small intestine being drawn out, the jejunum, as well as the end part of the small intestine called the ileum. The digestion of food is completed in the small intestine, and once the food has been broken down to its simplest form, it can be absorbed across the wall of the intestine through the jejunum and ileum and into the blood. The end products of digestion are carried through the liver where they are metabolized. The small intestines are very long, and absorption takes place along the entire length. There are folds called villi in the lining of the intestinal wall that allows for a larger area of absorption. By the time the food that has been eaten reaches the large intestine, most of the nutrients have been digested and absorbed. Within the large intestine, water is absorbed and some fermentation of dietary fiber by bacteria takes place, which produces gas. As you can see below, the large intestine is labeled, the cecum, as well as the colon.
Because the dog's digestive tract is relatively short and simple, he is unable to fully process large amounts of grains and fibers. These foods simply pass through the dog, leading to more waste for you to clean up. And now we are reaching the end of the digestion process. As you can see, the rectum and anus are labeled. Feces are around 60 to 70 percent water, and the rest is made up of undigested food, dead bacteria, and some inorganic material. The feces are stored in the rectum and evacuated through the sphincter. A commonly asked question is why do dogs eat poop? and this may just be more than bad behavior. If you are feeding a cheaper grain-based food, it is likely that much of the food is passing through your dog into his waste without ever even being absorbed. This can cause a problem in that your dog must eat more to get less nutritional value. In addition, it means that his waste smells pretty much like his food, and how is he supposed to really know the difference? And that is the end of our presentation on the digestive system. I hope you enjoyed our presentation and I hope you learned something new. Thank you!